Welcome. This is Melinda Barlow, CZT, and I'm going to make a little video down in the bottom because I started this and something happened and it, it wouldn't switch back. So today I am going to make alcohol ink and I have my bucket of pens that don't really work. I have um, my alcohol and it's isopropyl alcohol and my little uh, jar to put things in, a lid because you need a lid to keep it from evaporating, you need a little bottle to put it in afterwards to spray, and um, you can see here I've got some, um, turn off that little one, I've got some papers that I've just done, and um, these are just regular, um, computer paper, just regular computer paper. Here I have some, uh, I think it's a 110 pound um, cardstock, and I love the way it turns out because it dries quickly and it um, doesn't, it, it has a watercolor look. And I use these for end pages in the books I make. So I usually do two sets of them that are similar colors. I love this one. I don't know if you can really see how I mixed a red and an orange and they are gorgeous. And so first of all, we're going to make our ink and then I'm just gonna show you a little bit how I dye. Sorry for my really messy desktop. I'm going to cover it up with a piece of paper and I'm going to use a paper towel. I like to catch my drips on a paper towel because then I can use it um, in my um, in my art journals as uh, I can make rice paper out of it and I'll have to show you at some time how to make rice paper out of your, um, you know, your splashes. So today, I have experimented with, let's see if I can find my black. I wanted to make a black ink just for fun. And so I took a black Sharpie and I opened it up and I made this and you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's not black. It is as purple as it can be. So we're gonna to experiment today and just see if I get purple again from my black Sharpies. So, you know, there's a little color of everything in a Sharpie, so in a black. So these are ones that don't work very well. I have four of them. I, I like to make a lot when I make it so I don't have to, you know, make it as often as, you know, too often. And so I'm gonna fill this little jar. This is a, I think it's, I don't know, it's an eight ounce jar. It holds 16 ounces of honey, but that's honey weight. So um, I'm gonna get my pliers and we're gonna get started. Okay, here are my pliers, a nice sturdy pair of needle nose, and then I need a pair of scissors because I'm going to cut and I'm going to use some, um, well, I use these all the time, so they're dirty. I'm going to use some rubber gloves to protect my hands because I really don't want um, all of this all over my hands. So I have to blow that out and I'm going to put this on and I reuse these. If I take them off gently, I can reuse them. This one's, I'm gonna turn it right side out and then I blow air into it. So there I've got my gloves on because otherwise I go places and my hands are all inky and black, ooh, we don't want to have uh, uh, black ink all over it. So the first thing we do is we're going to take apart 
our pin. And you can see there's a tip right here. I'm just going to grab a hold of it with my, you might not be able to do that. There's sometimes, depending on the style of your pen, how hard it is to get apart. I've got to get my other pliers out. I have a couple of different needle nose pliers. And I'm going to try, these have a, a sharp end and they will cut it. It kind of broke. You know, if you ever go to do something, I'm just going to drop that down in my um, bottle because it will suck the ink out of it. And then I'm going to grab a hold of this and work. There's the ink. I just kind of, and there it is. That's the tube. It's covered in a plastic, but I don't want to, I'm not going to bother to take it off the plastic. I'm just going to cut it into little pieces. So there's one, and um, I don't recycle those other things. I just throw them out. I'm sure there's places that recycle, but not where I live. And there's my, you see how easy that fine point was to get out. And I'm just going to drop that down in there. And then this is the end. We pull apart for if you have a fine point Sharpie. And there's the end. And then we're going to, there it is. There's the tube of leftover ink and to me I'm cutting it it looks like it's going to be a dark purple again from what I can see on my uh, scissors as I cut this you can see it's not really cutting it all the way apart but I'm okay with that because as long as I've opened it up and can get the ink out of it I'm going to do all four of these because I want it to be a very concentrated ink color. So I'm going to tear these all apart. I always have a few black Sharpies around that um, don't have you know they just aren't writing well but you would be surprised at how much ink is inside that's left over after it has dried up and I should just stick with the um, ultra fine point or fine points they're much easier to get apart. And I found if I put the whole thing in, it takes so much longer to suck the ink out of that fiber. There, it's a, a little fiber um, core. So I'm going to pick up all of these and throw them in the bin. into the trash they go. And now I'm going to add my isopropyl alcohol. Now, I have, uh, I'm gonna see if I can show you the lid here. I have just punctured a hole in the lid there with the seal because otherwise it goes all over when I squirt it. So I have found that if I just Oh yes, we're getting a beautiful purple again. Instead of being black, on my on my uh, thing it says blue or something. I'll rewrite. But if you can kind of see the 
the purpley color that it's going and it I'm gonna put four or five ounces because I put so many pins in there if I just put one I want to keep it to about two ounces but since I put so many pins in there that I can fill this up so that it's uh, a little bit more put my lid on and shake it and it's definitely a purple I don't know if you can you can't really see that but it it's definitely a purple again so what you get out of a black is a gorgeous purple so if you don't have purple pens hey everybody has black ones so I'm gonna let this set until it you can see it's <coughs> pretty rich right now in color but as it sits it will drain out all the color in those little things. I'm going to pause just a second. I came back with the green that I had done. I just used up all this green and I'm gonna just pull out. You can see the um, how it's taken most of the color out of the center of that um, um, ink that little cotton or fiber fill where the ink is filled and so this is now ready to be discarded it's got a tiny bit of ink in the bottom of there but I will throw that out rinse out this jar and I'm I've got it I'm ready to make another one because I already made a beautiful emerald green and it, I always just leave the little ends in there Sometimes I'll fill more um, alcohol in if I don't think it's enough alcohol. So now I am going to just show you what happens, how I spray and what I do with it. You wonder, I mean, I have absolutely fallen in love with the alcohol inks. I love dyeing with them. I love them for my book covers and different things. So let me get my table prepared and then I will be back to show you how they work. Okay, I am back and I am going to put a plastic down and this is just, I recycle uh, grocery bags, just open them up and recycle so that I, I don't want the alcohol spray all over my uh, desk, so. And I'm going to take my paper, my nap, my paper towel, and this is just a sheet of um, computer paper. Matter of fact, this one had a little something printed on it. But and so I am going to take some of that purple, and I'm just going to spray oh, this spray. There we go. It doesn't want to spray out very well. And I will put a link below where I got my sprayer. That one does not want to squirt very well. Sometimes they need cleaned. And I think this one must need a little cleaning. So we're going to switch out and I'm going to get a different purple. There we go. So I'm just spraying out my purple on my paper and it goes kind of splotchy, but that's okay, I don't mind that. And I'm gonna mix it with a little emerald green. I love green and purples together. And um, I'm in the process of making some fun little paper flowers for my for a holiday uh, for the Valentine's Day and but there we have it you can see that it is a little splotchy it kind of soaks in you can see where it's not I also have a see if I can see where I there it is. 
I have a gold leaf, so I just put some gold leaf um, in my spray bottle and it settles so I have to shake it up. But that gives me a little uh, gold spray. If you want to have a glimmer spray, you can take eyeshadow, um, and I go to the dollar store and get eyeshadow and you can see the glimmer in this yellow. You can, it, it's just fun to have a little glimmer spray and that's beautiful. But you can kind of see that it's pretty wet. It does soak through onto the other side so you get a double sided with uh, having to spray both sides and um, it's just fun. To, to do and it still runs a little bit sometimes I let it run and I can see the gold leaf is kind of running it's heavier so it runs to one side and I'm going to just set this aside and let it dry and now I'm going to take my cardstock now this is a little heavier cardstock it has a it's not a watercolor paper so it has a smoother finish and it holds um, the color beautifully. I am going to do an orange and and we say maybe an orange and red here. We'll see. This is, oh, this is my red. And for some reason my red separated. And I have to shake it. I don't know why it separated. It was just Sharpie markers. And there we have and so I usually just give it a squirt all over and and now I'm going to just mix some colors um, I think I'm going to add a little orange to this it intensifies the red and a little yellow And you can see the little spots appearing. That is the glimmer spray. It's got a little, um, I think it's called mica. And so you can kind of see it in there. And it just makes it beautiful. And if you want it to run, sometimes I will make mine just run into this center. Sometimes. I even take my, see if I can find, you hear my, I have a Lazy Susan, I put all my pins and stuff on. So I've got a little airbrush, and if I want, not an airbrush, but a blower, if I want, this kind of dries it, but it also gives me some spots to do, um, my if I want to tangle on this I can kind of force the ink into um, different puddles and it kind of separates and you can see that the pink coming out you really never know what you're going to get I think that's what's the fun with this and I've got quite a bit pooling up here on the ends so I'm just going to blow them back into my um, onto my paper because it's kind of warped a little bit. So I'll push it down with my finger so I can get it to come back to the edges. And it's drying almost. It's still running a tiny bit, but oh, I just think that is for me. It's so much easier than a watercolor. It, um, you can add that glimmer to it. And I do it right over some of my tiles. I will do it right over the tiles or I will tangle right on this. Now, the thing with the um, cardstock, the back, it's thick enough that the back stays white. And when I go to use this, I, I will, um, here's a little book that I just made and I made these the end papers on my inside of my book so I did one kind of a green and you can kind of see the gold in there but I'll have to show you this book it's kind of fun 
I needed a gift for some, uh, and so I just put my tangles in here. Some of them didn't come out exactly how I wanted, so, but it's, um, this was my first run on it. But you can see I just did a kind of a adult coloring book, and I did not sew these in, so I will do a little demo on how I attached these inside of here and um, they were, and I, I even had some to put some of my sayings in, and, uh, but I just tangled and then made a book. Uh, I did scan them all so that they're in my computer so I can reproduce this again, but I'm giving it to some um, young kids that I, uh, teach you on Sunday in church for their birthdays so that they can color it. I'm giving in some color pencils and um, and this book that I have tangled in and it's just every time I would do a class or a tangle I would um, just save it and then I would put it inside of you know my book and then those are the end papers that attach the book and it, it's um, hardcover, and I put some little um, corner pieces on and a, a little mark, uh, ribbon marker. So this will be my next demo on how I do this. My printer ran out of ink. I got a new printer and I already ran it out of ink. And I am so fortunate that I have instant ink from, um, it's a HP printer. And so I'm just waiting for my ink to arrive. But that is how you make alcohol inks. And I, I put them all in a little bottle with a sprayer. You can get these at the dollar store, but I found them much cheaper to buy them in bulk um, on Amazon. And it is just so much fun. And I'd like to show you, these are some that I did uh, some tangling on and used the strings as the, you know, as the alcohol ink came out to tangle on. And uh, so it was, they're just, just too much fun. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial about alcohol inks and how I do them. And they're inexpensive and it's just a fun way to add color to your um, tangles or paper that you're going to maybe put in a book. But thanks again for watching. Have a great day and tangle every day.